right guys, good morning. My name's Sandy, this is Sawing with Sandy. It is first thing in the morning, one of my favorite times to get out here in the woods. It's nice and quiet. It's not too warm, but unfortunately it started raining, so it's a little wet. What I'm doing today out here is I'm dealing with that W pile behind me, waste, because if you have a sawmill or you're about to get a sawmill, like that one in there, you're gonna have to contend with a lot of this stuff, the waste. Now, when I say waste, I'm just talking about the sides of the log that you don't use for lumber and uh, ultimately you have to do something with. You could let it pile up like I used to and then deal with that dreaded pile one day, but that'll take you forever to get, uh, to get processed. So what I try to do is take care of it as I go. Now I look at this slab rack here and I look at the slabs on it and it's definitely a little higher than I would like, but I'm gonna make use of it today. I'm gonna make some of this into wood chips, which you can sort of see under the pine needles, which I put on my trails whenever there's a low spot. And I'm also gonna make some of this into firewood. And if we duck our way around here, you guys will see some of the wood chips, but you'll also see some of the firewood. I'm gonna finish filling that up, then we're gonna stack it over there. This stuff I use for a variety of things. I'll heat my home with it, I'll make maple syrup with it. Maybe I'll even have a campfire with it. Tiny house cabin needs some heating as well. That's what that stuff will be used for. So I'm gonna take the small stuff here today, like this stuff. I'm gonna run that through the chipper. Anytime we get down to some better pieces that have a bit more, bit more meat on it, then we're gonna cut it up with a chainsaw into some firewood. Anyways, that's dealing with waste. Make sure you got a plan in place if you're about to get a sawmill, because every time you cut, you're gonna be making a pile of that stuff. You cut a lot, you're gonna make a lot of piles of that stuff. Here we go. Guys, just as I'm about to swing this thing down, I wanna just talk about what I'm gonna be using here. This is my Woodland Mills WC68. This is supposed to take about a six inch diameter piece of material. Uh, I can tell you I have put a six inch piece through here and it goes through fine. Uh, for the most part, I tend to use softwood. That's what goes through here. If you run something like hardwood, well, it's probably going to come down to a combination of log diameter and horsepower at your P PTO as to what it's going to comfortably take in. Anyways, if we look in here, you guys can see the infeed roller that is hydraulically driven. Uh, there's a belt that gets run off the PTO. That belt runs a hydraulic pump and the hydraulic pump turns that infeed roller. One of the nice things you're going to see today, I can pump material into there. The roller grabs it and takes it the rest of the way and then I can go and grab other stuff. I don't have to sit here and constantly baby the thing so that it goes through. It goes through on its own. Anyways, it folds up like this, which is kind of nice. As I'm going through the bush, you don't want it sticking out too far because next thing you know, you forget. Bang it off a tree and you bend her all up so let's get her set down here and we'll get her hooked up this tractor if you're brand new here that's 40 horsepower at the engine about 32 uh, maybe 33 at the pto so it's not the biggest tractor in the world but i find it's a really good combination for what i do We'll put the wood chips over there that way I can drive by if I need to cut up the material to load it into the IBC cages just one more thing here just got to hook up the forward reverse and neutral which there's a rod under here and that uh, that red lever there that's basically what controls whether it goes into forward neutral or reverse and that's referring to the infeed roller forward taking material in reverse pushing it out or not moving anyways let's fire up the tractor
All right, guys, well, we shut her down there. I think that's all we're gonna do. And as you can tell, it makes some real nice chips. It's probably ready to have the blade sharpened or at least rotated. Most of the chips are, uh, you know, pretty coarse. We have some pieces in here, like these stringy bits that make its way through. But overall, I like these chips. They, uh, they're they very, very solid and provide a real good base, especially on wet trails. Anyways, here's what we got left over. We have this much wood here. Not a whole lot, not the biggest pieces of slab wood, but I'm gonna cut this up with a chainsaw in my slab rack here. We'll put her into that IVC cage. That'll probably top that off and it might even fill up this one here. And then we'll go from there. Anyways, here we go.
Okay, I'd say that went pretty well. Not a big fan of cutting near the ends. As you guys saw, I ran a strap around it. This is the first time I've done this. I don't know if it worked overly well. I definitely made uh, some of them not fly around, but this uh, overall works pretty good. You can see 16 inch pieces. I cut right down the center here. One thing I gotta be careful of, and you can see here, I got a little uh, a little too far with my cut there. I cut into my, my slab rack. But one thing you gotta be careful is uh, to make sure you know where the bottom is so you don't do that. Other than that, this thing's pretty handy, except when you fill it like three feet above it. But uh, let's load this into the IBC cage and we'll go from there. I'm trying to pick it up in bundles and as you're gonna see, it works sometimes and sometimes not so much. These little guys which are sideways don't help. I know some of you guys mentioned putting ratchet straps around every single slot here. Uh, my concern is I'm going to eventually hit one of those guys and it's going to bung up my chainsaw and I'm going to lose the strap. So maybe I'll try it at some point, but I don't want to try it yet because I don't really have any old ratchet straps floating around that I'm willing to lose. And so uh, I think I'm going to hold that idea off for now. Another thought about that. There's so much wood here, I wouldn't be able to lift it up by hand anyways, this whole wrap, if it was a ratchet strap containing it. So it probably wouldn't save me a lot of time. I'd be doing a lot of fumbling and likely what would happen if I did lift it up, maybe with the tractor or something, I'd get it to about here and then the wood would fly out of the ratchet strap and I'd be picking it up off the ground. So I think for now, I'm gonna forego that idea and uh, just continue on like this. not to let her hit the ground. There she goes. Okay. Here's a good little pile. That's too bad. You guys probably saw me standing on this stump here. There's a reason I've left it here. It actually allows me to get up a bit higher onto the pile. Cut that one. One thing I always got to be mindful of before I fill these is to position the skid, the bottom, so that it uh, faces where my tractor can drive in with the forks. Give that a go. <clears throat> All right, guys, well, it looks nice having some wood in these IBC cages and also some chips over there that I can use. I can tell you one thing, I am not in any better shape than I was yesterday. I am sweating profusely, I'm out of breath, and I'm just about shaking and itching for a sludge. One thing's for certain, I love being out here. I'm glad you guys came along for the journey. We got the slab rack all clear. That's really good because I've got some more slabs to put in here very shortly. Once we cut up those logs, which came from just down there the other day, on route to making lumber like that, which will eventually be the siding on my equipment shed. Guys, as always, if you have any questions, make sure you put it down below. Make sure you give this video the old like a if you did like it. And as always, see all you guys next time.